ka pa pow There he is right there, goodness. Oh my gosh, what a strike. Loading up the cooler and heading out on an adventure here, and it's finally raining here in Texas. Thank goodness. We are heading to another part of the state, and today's adventure video is sponsored by our friends at Mystery Tackle Box. So everybody new to this channel that doesn't know what Mystery Tackle Box is, it is a subscription service. It brings delicious tackle to your doorstep every month. And they have literally been a sponsor on this channel since, gosh, the last time I fished this lake that is behind me, which has been a really long time, which we'll get into in just a minute. Mystery Tackle Box realized a long time ago that the fishing industry was going to change, and it's been really cool to be with them uh, over the course of these years where all these content creators are getting people into fishing and the fishing population now is so huge and with covid and all that stuff and i don't know if you've been to retail stores lately but a lot of the pegs are empty so this is a super easy way to get tackled straight to your doorstep without having to touch anything one of my favorite things about mystery tackle box is i have literally learned about new types of baits from getting the lures in the box. And not only that, but they're gonna break down fishing scenarios for you to help you learn, not just in stuff that comes in the box, you know, that tells you literally how to fish the baits or literally where to fish the baits and what times of year, but also through an extensive library of videos. Their YouTube channel is full of tips. I will link it down below. If you guys are new into fishing, I suggest going and watching a bunch of those because there's a lot of just classic techniques that you'll pick up on really quick. And the Pro Box is always full of juicies, y'all. I'm talking really good quality baits for example the daggum filthy frog is in here in a severely dangerous color the old bone my gosh my old alma mater y'all lake fort trophy lures i literally lived in that tackle shop they make great quality baits too this is a completely new bait i haven't even fished right here this is a 10,000 fish tickle tail and it looks like a fantabulous bladed jig trailer bill lewis crankbait gambler flipping baits and they even got some, some hard heads, some swing heads, something I've never even seen before. They include a jig in here as well. I mean, it is, it is loaded down. Top it off with a patriotic fish sticker that is going on the silver bullet, I can guarantee you. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now. Anyways, if you wanna save on your first box, use the link down in the description. Go down there, click on it. Use the code MONDO, that is Mondo, M-O-N-D-O. -O. And they're gonna hook you up with that discount. Now, I've been walking around this lake right here. This is a lake I used to fish all the time when I was uh, going to Texas A&M University, fishing on that fishing team. It's where I started learning about fishing clear water and learning those techniques, more finesse techniques and how fish are act differently in, in clear water. This lake is called Lake Belton. And actually Fort Hood, one of our major uh, army bases in the country is stationed here. So. If you hang around the lake long enough, you're bound to see an Apache helicopter fly over. It is not known for its amazing bass fishing, but it is a cool lake because it's clear water and it's kind of wraps around. It, it fishes more like a highland reservoir, like Table Rock or any of those uh, lakes that have really deep clear water and have long rocky points. So we're gonna do a little camping, do a little fishing. But what's really cool about this lake is that it has all three species. I don't know if I can still catch a fish out here, y'all. We're going to try. Okay, y'all, this is what I'm going to start out with. The top water I'm just going to keep handy. This is our Hound walking bait. It's a three treble hook walking bait. I've got it on 30 pound braid. Uh, I've got a Ned rig rigged up, and then I've got just a, a recon. So that's just the standard size recon, 8 to 12 foot. First fish that I've marked out here are in 28 feet of water. So, whew, don't think the recon is going to get all the way down there. I'm hoping that maybe right before dark we'll get some top water activity. I drove through the storms and then it's sunny here, but it might be coming in. It looks like there's some some haze, but it was like in the 70s on my drive, and then I got here it was 95. So, I drove straight into the sun basically. The last time I fished this lake, a Ned rig wasn't even a thing. So the rattling Ned out here, I think is going to perform. There he is. Yep. 
I mean, it's just a boulder. It's got to have a fish on it. Oh my goodness. That little Ned rig hit me right in the hair. That guy was 11 inches. Ah, damn it. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Broke me off. Dude. Oh, my gosh. I know what's going on. This place has gotten zebra mussels since the last time I was here. Holy moly, that is just a clean cut. That is fresh line right there. There we go. Come on, baby, be a smallie. Well, that one was just up there. This is either a smallmouth or a spotted bass. It looks like it's got a darker back. Oh, smallmouth. Oh my gosh, look at that guy go. Whoa, bam! Yeah, baby. Oh, that is so cool. Now, y'all watching from other states where you actually have fat smallmouth, <laughs> this is what you call a Texas summer smallmouth. <laughs> That is a bullet right there, just long and skinny, and look at that mouth. If you guys watch my uh, my series where I went up north, unthawed the Great Northern Tangle, a fish that had this size mouth up there would be like three and a half pounds. <laughs> so uh, they're just, they're, you know, different down here. But what a great fight, what an awesome fish. Even though it's summer, fish are a little bit more lethargic. Smallmouth always have a good fight. Wabam! Complete 180. So I've moved up into a pocket that has uh, quite a few trees in it. I'm about, I don't know, a couple miles from where I was, but that's what's so cool about this lake, because it's just got, you know, a big difference in deep rocky boulder type water and then you can fish some more pebbly sand with uh with trees oh just saw a shad flip over there better get a line out there son oh my oh my look at the fish here look at the fish you can see the outline of it wow bam right there in 20 feet that is a bass if i've ever seen one Woo! look up there in the shallows too my goodness i might have to Rig up a little jig, more shallow presentation. Get our top water moving. Oh yeah, it's starting to look bombastic in here. Bass exploding out here. I'm gonna get this hound and slide one in his face. Oh my gosh, first cast, got him. Oh, freaking exploded, large mouth. Large mouth on the hound. Come off that gum. Daggum. Okay, fishing freaks, it is starting to happen. We just had our first topwater, uh, I think it was, a, I don't know, it could have been a largemouth, but they are pushing some shad up here on this bank and um, throwing a jig right now, but I just had two bites on the hound and I can see them got, kind of pushing these little schools, so. I'm going to fire that out there. I'm going to fire the recon and see if we can connect. You know, the, the problem, like I just lost that fish, but the problem with fishing <laughs> braid, the treble hooks, is you're going to get a hole uh, in their mouth in the summertime. It's going to be a bigger hole with that braid. I could just work the bait a lot better with the braid. So that's where the old rod comes in. Get you a soft rod. This rod right here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll find out soon about all of our our rods that we've been developing but um it's pretty much tailor-made for for this right here so oh my gosh oh it came off holy moly that guy just unloaded his inertia i was <laughs> you guys couldn't see my head but i wasn't looking i wasn't paying attention <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, I got him that time. Jeez, that's gotta be a small mouth. Just angry at it. Yeah, that is, that is a small mouth. 
What a ballistic missile. Ladies and gentlemen, top water. Oh, boy, small mouth and top water. You better, better go ahead and reach for them pliers. I don't normally like to do it this way, but I am by myself. Oh, okay, turn it off. We're all good. We're all good, baby. We're all good, sweetheart. You get that little torpedo body of yours back in action. See ya. Oh, man. I don't know if that was the same fish. Just multiple attempts on that thing. Oh, Just my God. Crack. That's, oh. that's just so crazy. Okay. Bring on the top water strikes. I'm ready. I think it's a good time to throw top water anytime you see surface activity. So regardless of time of day, we're entering into, you know, evening, but middle of the day, I've caught smallmouth in a hundred degrees uh, over, you know, deep 30, 40 feet of water. Uh, it's gotta be clear usually, but if you see any kind of surface activity, shad popping, especially if you see a bass swirl or pop one, don't be afraid to get the top water out. Oh my gosh, one just popped right in there, right in those stick ups. Sometimes it's not, you know, the predominant thing that they want. They might want a swim bait or a crank bait, but sometimes it is the actual top water that they really want. That should be just cam bowed. Ka -pa -ka -pa -pow. There he is right there, goodness. Oh my gosh, what a strike. God. That's a, it's about the same size. Oh, he's got another one with it. Oh my God, he's got three with it. I think I just got, I just hooked another one. Oh my gosh, no, another one, a bigger one grabbed it. A bigger one freaking grabbed it out of that fish's mouth. Holy cow, oh my God, you guys. You don't even know how awesome that was. Gosh, I've never had that happen before. I had a 12 incher and then this bass comes up behind, there's two more bass. And then this like three pound bass comes up and grabs it out of the other fish's mouth. I thought I had both of them on, but I, I exchanged for an upgrade. <laughs> oh, holy cow. I don't know if I can sling this fish. It might be hooked pretty good. Let's see. Oh yeah, you're hooked pretty good. Come here. Oh my gosh, that is a good small mouth too. Holy moly. Come here, baby. You grabbed it good. Oh my gosh, guys. That's like, that's top 10 bites of the year. Top 10 bites of the year. And he was just pinned in the schnoz too. It sucks that you guys didn't get to see the, the grab from this fish. But the first one that you saw jump was just a, you know, 13, 14 incher like I just caught a second ago. And then this one and another smaller fish come up behind it, like a two pounder. And then this, this one snatches it out of its mouth and then spits up another shad, a big shad. There's that little cracked up sexy shad color in the hound. It's really good. That is phenomenal. I gotta get a picture of that one. That's a cool memory. So angry. So angry, give me your face, please. Oh, there you are, there you are, beautiful sugar booger. <laughs> oh my gosh, seriously one of the coolest bites of this year, maybe of my last five years. To do it in Texas on top water, that was just, I don't know, amazing. See, baby, go back in that clear water and munch them sheds. Yeah. Y'all gotta smash the like button for that because every time that happens, and it's never happened with small mouth with me, but when it happens with large mouth or spotted bass, I always get the smaller one. So like the smaller one comes up and grab it, grabs it. You never get the bigger one. Like when you see that bigger one chasing, you're like, oh my gosh, I want that fish. That just happened. Just go ahead and give it a little tickle. Little thumb tickle on that thumbs up, please. I'm gonna move spots, y'all. I don't know if I just got lucky and came across a little wolf pack or the wind blowing in kind of disturbed that whatever was going on there, but gosh, I wanna find that again. I'm actually gonna zoom across the lake here. I think 
what I'm looking at across the lake is a spot that I, it was like one of my go-tos. I used to uh, catch fish there. Well, they're on some boulders, I think. My memory serving me correctly, which it often doesn't. We don't have much time left of the day. We still gotta set up camp, we gotta cook, but it would be nice to take a trip down memory lane, see some big boulders, catch fish off of it, and then go in. Gosh, that one came up and snoozled it. Got it again. Got him. Dude, he came off that rock, largemouth. That's cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Gosh, I had that, there was a deep bite. I felt the fish bite it as I was, I was stuck in a rock. I pulled it out and boom, and then I reeled it up and boom, hit it again. And finally, I just let it sink. It was probably only like 10 feet down and smashed it. All right, largemouth, pretty sweet. Oh yeah. Big Chinook helicopter flying over. Catching green fish, evening. I think I might try me one more and then I'm I'm, I'm gonna go in and start cooking. It's just, I'm feeling the good vibes out here. There might be more than one. That is just kind of weird how that happened, this little spot. So I'm gonna try to get another one real quick. I mean, I was hung, but I was hung in the juicy, apparently. Got him. That was smaller. Ooh! Dude, you were. You were down there in like 25 foot. You better be careful, man. Some sharks down there that'll eat you. Yep, come on, baby. Be good. Oh, just decent. Oh, there's definitely more than one on this thing, though. Oh, here we go. Keep beep, beep, boo. There we go. Just hook right in the top of the schnoz. Just a little large mouth. Probably a 12 incher, but it's deep in the heart of Texas. You smell good in your nice, clean, deep water. Oh. Oh, oh come on. God, oh, they're down there. <laughs> they're just not big. Hey, that's a fat largemouth. Dude, you've been eating up. This is so interesting because normally this is like a smallmouth area, you know? We got. 25 feet of water on a boulder. And they're just a bunch of little small largemouth. There's gotta be a good one. Gosh, I see some, I see four more sitting on top of this rock. Got snagged on it. That's where I should get bit though. Yep, he ate it. Ate it. Ate it, eating it. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. There's a little better one. I mean, they're right on that spot. Oh my gosh, y'all. If you're not fishing braid on your spinning reels, by the way, do it. Just go ahead and do it. Because you can feel stuff like that. That's inhaled. You can feel little changes like that that make the difference. I mean, obviously, pan optics is really cool, but before there was that, just having that feel in your rod and using that braid. And I've got just a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader on here. It's a decent large mouth there, it's like a 14. Oh, oh he bit it, bit it, <clears throat> bit it on the rock, getting stuck on the rock every time it's a bite. Oh my gosh. Boy, you guys are healthy down there. I know I said I was gonna go in the memory bank has been refreshed. This is literally the boulder. The water's low enough, I can I can tell. It's it's the biggest, most dominant boulder on this bank. This is where uh, I used to come and catch a key fish. When I was fishing a tournament, or I used to night fish out here. He's got it, he was on the rock, little guy. We 
you want to talk about absolutely cleaning up. And there we go. The old Blackhawk coming in to give us a sweep. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Just a big old American dominating machine flying through the air here, giving it a one last send over the water before he heads in. Maybe they're doing night operations out here, I don't know. Y'all, you just gotta respect what we got going on in the good old US of A. One time I was fishing out here, no joke, I was running up, I got close up into where the military base is. They were just running some some operations with the Blackhawk, or the, the Apache helicopters, and the pilots were looking around and wherever they were looking, the gun turrets were rotating and looking. And they, you know, he just looked over me and waved and that gun went <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. I said, bud, I'm gonna let you have this fishing hole right here. Hit on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna send it in back to camp. Fishing freaks, it is time to take a bite. Look, oh yeah, baby. Wow. That trailer needs some grease. This is a good way to end the camp day. I wish I could get a nice cold shower before I hop in uh, whatever I'm hopping in here. To sleep because I'm so sweaty and I'm eating hot food and I'm sitting by a fire. But that's just camping in Texas in the summertime. The cool thing is, we had an absolutely amazing topwater eat today by a smallmouth in the middle of Texas. I don't know if I'll ever have another bite like that. It was so cool. Then we go over to a boulder I hadn't fished in years. And I uh, hardly even recognized it when I got up on it. I was like, oh yeah, this is the juice. And then I literally see those fish sitting there. Caught a bunch of largemouth. That was fun. Then we got daggum helicopters flying over the military base. It's just a cool spot. It's just as awesome as I remember it. There's a ton of deer walking around here right now too that y'all can't even see. But tomorrow, I bet you're going to get a glimpse of them in the morning. So stay tuned. I'm going to go explore this lake even more. Try to tap my memory bank and see what other kind of fishing we can get into. Once again, I want to give a shout out to MTB for sponsoring all my adventurous type videos and being with me for so many years and all of you guys for watching my channel. Some of you might even remember me fishing this lake many, many moons ago. So if you've been here for that long, I salute you. That is good, y'all. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to smash the like button for awesome fish catching greatness. And I wish you the best in all of your outdoor adventures. God bless you. See you soon.